What's going on everyone, Jay's Two Cents here, and it's been a while since I've gotten to do any sort of graphics card review because we're kind of deep into the life cycle of what's currently out. So I was super excited when EVGA told me they're launching a new graphics card, so I didn't have to go turn tricks on the corner to get my fix anymore. But I, I digress, that's a conversation for another video. But we got a chance to go to the EVGA headquarters and check out the new For The Win 2 uh, GTX 1080, which is featuring their new ICX cooler. I say ICX cooler, but trust me when I say there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. It is not just a cooler. We're gonna talk about that today. Now last week I had the opportunity of going in a behind the scenes tour at EVGA's headquarters where they showed us like the RMA center, the testing center, the packaging. I got to hang out with some of my friends like Paul and Kyle and Steven with Gamers Nexus and we all got to get really hands on with this. So trust me when I say that there's a lot of information here I apologize if there's too much information in this video or it's too long, I'll try and condense it. So make sure you guys check out their coverage too because it's always good to get multiple perspectives on a single topic. After all, we all know I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Now on the surface, the ICX cooler and the ACX cooler are very difficult to distinguish, but trust me when I say it's what's underneath that is really different here. Now we're gonna talk about three things here about this major design. We're gonna talk about the new cooler, we're gonna talk about the PCB, and we're also gonna talk about software. I'm not gonna be doing any game benchmarks on this. It's still a 1080, it's, it's still gonna have the very same performance that you saw before, although maybe a little bit less throttling. Uh, so we're not gonna be doing any game benchmarks. Today I'm focusing simply on a teardown and temperatures. Now the heat thin array found on the ICX actually has these holes drilled all the way through it, which allow air to kind of escape through the heat sink going sideways as well as moving air through it. So it's supposed to give a little bit more efficient cooling capability uh, and also a little bit more efficient airflow. And trust me when I say that you can indeed feel the air coming off the back of the card, especially when it's under load, more so than I could with the back of this card, which is completely solid and blocked off. Air can't really get out the sides very well at all. Now underneath the heatsink is also a very different design when it comes to the base plate. The VRM is definitely a forethought when it comes to cooling because now you have these sort of heat spires, we'll call them. It's not really a heat sink, but they're definitely heat spires that are designed to pull heat through the plate, get it up into the airflow and give you better VRM cooling. Now EVGA's solution to the thermal issue was by putting heat pads between the heat sink and the top of the base plate, which does indeed touch the VRM. It's just it didn't have anything on top of the base plate to dissipate the heat. So the thermal pads though did increase the cooling efficiency quite a bit. But the problem is the heat sink that it's touching is not flat on the bottom, it's, it's pointy. So there's a lot less surface area that could have been there in the first place. So what EVGA did on the ICX cooler was they sort of bent the fins to make them a little bit flat. So where it actually touches the thermal pad is giving you much more efficient transfer of heat now. Also too, the heat sink that's directly on top of the GPU, the bottom of that was completely flat and closed off. Well, now they actually have 50% of airflow that can actually travel through that and get down to the base plate as well, which gives you much better cooling for the memory. So it's quite a bit different on the heat sink although it looks very similar on the surface. Now moving on to the back of the graphics card, you can see the original back plate was a very nice piece of machined aluminum. It had some vents where it mattered, but again, where the back of the VRMs were was also a vent. It didn't have the greatest contact in mind when it came to the back side of the power delivery. Now remember, heat radiates in multiple directions, not just one direction. So heat coming off the back of the card was also an afterthought. So what they've done is they actually created a bit of a heat sink built into the back plate, which is separate down the middle, so they don't, you don't get as much heat contamination from the GPU side of things moving over to the VRM side. So obviously it's working with that very defined limitation of heat transfer from the VRM. Now before I talk about temperatures, let's talk about my testing methodology. I use an open air test bench because I want the only factor on the temperature of the graphics card to be the cooler itself. There's no way I could put any case on here that's gonna account for all real world scenarios. So right now, the only factor on what the temperatures are on the graphics card are what the limitations of the cooler itself are. So I'm not gonna address any of the open air test bench comments in this video. You guys can go and check out this one up here. I actually tested open air test bench versus a closed case with the same GPU to see what the differences are. You can have the conversation over there if you want it. Now on the flip side, having an open air test bench actually makes negative results when it comes to things like backplate test testing and seeing if this new backplate design is going to be efficient because there is zero airflow happening over the backplate. There's no case fans moving air. Usually your case fans are blowing directly on your GPU, especially if you have a side case fan. So that was something to keep in mind. So I did do testing without any airflow. 
and then I also tested with a fan on there to see what the differences would be. So now with all of that out of the way, let's talk about how well this design really works. Now with the new Precision X, you can actually monitor power delivery, GPU temperature and memory temperature. So you have full control over what's going on in your system. And you can actually set temperature indicators where you can change the color of those LEDs to kind of tell you what's going on at a glance if you can see your graphics card through your window. If you don't want those on, just set the color to black and they won't even be there. Now at idle, we were seeing power delivery temperatures sitting in the mid 30s perfectly acceptable, it's where I would expect it to be. But once I put it under load, we saw temperatures go up into the low 70s, which sounds like a lot, but MOSFETs are typically rated up to something like 120 C, so we are well below that threshold, but that's because obviously now we have cooling on both the back plate and the front plate that's giving us active cooling to the VRMs. It's doing a fantastic job. Now, I also used my thermal imaging camera for this test because the matte black back plate was perfect emissivity for this test. And I was surprised to see that we actually were within one or two degrees of the temperatures that were being shown for the GPU on Precision, o Precision OC. I, was, I wasn't expecting that. So I was kind of happy that made me go, yay, the thermal testing is actually worth doing. But that also got me thinking in cases, like I mentioned earlier, typically there's airflow that moves over the back plate. So how well is that going to work? So I took a thousand RPM fractal design fan, put it about the distance away a case, the front case fan would be, and had it blow air towards the GPU. It's not a huge stream of air. It's a thousand RPM fan. It does not, it's not a high CFM fan. It's just a steady, slight breeze on the back of it. And check this out. Temperatures actually came down to where they matched what was actually showing on Precision XOC. So that was very good. One, it sort of validated the temperature sensors and saying, yeah, this is this is legit temperature. And two, it made the use of the FLIR just completely valid. So I was happy about that. So I think that makes all the emissivity gurus out there uh, satisfied. At least I would hope so. But Jay, I like to overclock my graphics cards. What's gonna happen if I do that? Well, guys, I got good news because fortunately there's a separate fan curve for VRMs as well, which will override any fan curve you have going on for the GPU, because guess what? The fans are separate. The right fan on top of the power delivery is independent from the left fan, and it will do its own thing based on VRM temperature, and the left fan could be set directly to GPU. Now, if you wanna link them together, you can, but I think it's really neat that you have a system that overrides it and says, hey, once we hit 74C on the VRM, let's start speeding up the fans a little bit to keep things as cool as possible. And the temperatures that you saw right here were all with the factory curve. I didn't change anything. And you could see that we had temperatures that were very, very respectable. So even when I applied a 2088 overclock, I wasn't seeing any additional temperature on the VRM simply because of the fact that the fans were speeding up to kind of counteract that. Now, EVGA tells me they have a temperature target of 74C on the VRM. That that can't be changed. That's a safety thing. They've determined that number. So that's where it's going to be. But I also was curious with an overclock and setting the fans on something manual at like 60% fan speed, sacrificing a little bit of noise, the temperatures on the VRMs came all the way down to the low 60s. Absolutely amazing. The design is clearly working. Now, speaking of safety, some of the photos of the burned PCBs on the ACX fiasco scared EVGA enough to where they actually added a fuse to the PCB that will blow before anything else catches fire or burns. So that's a good, I think all manufacturers should do that. Anything that's got power going through it, in my opinion, should have some sort of a built-in fuse, including me, I, I blow my fuses all the time. So as you can see, it's quite a bit more than just a new cooler. It's software, it is a cooler, and as well some PCB changes and nine sensors to keep an eye on what's going on inside of your system. Now at the EVGA press day, we did have some questions. We, we asked EVGA directly, well, what if you're out of the step up program? Or what if you've already got a for the win card and you wanna step up, but you're outside of that window? Um, are you just leaving the old owners out to dry? Well, no, they're, what they're doing right now, and you have to get more information on their website. Uh, I don't have any of the details, but what they've told us, at least via messaging, is that there's going to be a $99 step up program to be able to upgrade to a For The Win 2 if you want it. Now, I will say this, I've got three of these For The Win cards with the thermal pads applied. I have no problems using it. Uh, in fact, I put one inside a friend's system, if you guys remember that. I have full confidence in the ACX 3.0 with the thermal pads applied to it. It's just good to see that EVGA responded to the public outcry at, about something needing to be done about the design. A company that doesn't listen to its customers is not gonna be a company for long, so kudos to EVGA on that one. I think more companies should actually follow suit and listen to what their, their customers have to say. <clears throat> Apple. But who needs to listen to your customers when you have courage? Anyway, guys, time to go. Thanks for watching today's video. Again, make sure you check out the other coverages out there. There was quite a few of us at uh, the press day, so chances are your favorite outlet has probably covered something regarding ICX. So make sure you check them out. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Tell me what you want me to test moving forward. The Terry Crews build, guys, it's coming. I promise the last bits of pieces I was waiting on are finally here. It's coming.
I, I just don't want to divulge too much. I want it to be a surprise for the guys. So stop nagging me. All right, time to go. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.